Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast. Okay, this week I'm going to get angry as fuck because we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why people might hurt you and then we're going to move on to like what the fuck to do when that happens and like different ways you can respond. Okay, so I have been thinking a lot about this as of late and it's been pissing me the fuck off. So I think... Okay, I'm coming in from the angle of a relationship, as always, because my friends are nothing but marvellous and my partner's nothing but evil. So that's the only take I can give you. I was, like, reflecting on some experiences I've had with, not necessarily partners, but people that I've been, like, romantically involved with and there's, like, a strong emotional connection. So, like, things are very, like, driven and, like, you get angry in ways you wouldn't get angry with friends. You do shit, you need validation that you don't need with friendships, whatever. So every obviously it's a different connection scenario do you know what i mean so sad these are my favorite trackies ever look at them and okay they don't look cute from that angle but trust me they're cool and i stain them with my fucking period what the hell and i usually okay period or miscarriage i used to say because i usually have to stop my pill for like three or four days before i'll get a period and i swear to god i missed one pill like yesterday night and i'm on my period today so what the fuck is that i don't know but anyways So I was thinking a lot about attachment styles and people who have shit ones and look, have whatever attachment style you have because it's not your fucking choice, but don't fucking put it on other people. If your attachment style is shit, you need to be in therapy for it. Like I don't have the most ideal one. I'm very anxiously attached and very anxious avoidant. Emphasis on the avoidant. So I'm working on mine and you should be working on yours. Okay, I'm not stood here like being like, if you're shit, you shouldn't be shit. Like, I'm shit too, but at least I'm working on it. This is a revelation I came to very recently because I was like, why the fuck do people get in those relationships where... Because I've had two types of relationships, right? One relationship type is like, it's great. A lot of it's really nice and then something humongous happens. You have this big blowout right at the end. They cheat or they they get caught in some kind of big lie or some kind of big explosion happens and it ends the relationship. So I've had that. And then I've had also ones where the whole relationship is fucking treacherous and the ending is the relief because you finally leave. So I've had both. And I honestly don't know which one I prefer. To be fair, I think I prefer the latter. I think I prefer being in the trenches with you the whole time and then relieved when I go. Because you can kind of prepare yourself for the big final, like, right, I'm going now. And you, you kind of break up with them while you're still with them, right? Like, you're, like, getting over them during the relationship. And then, like, you're, like, a happy, free butterfly once you leave. As opposed to being, like, happy with the wrong person. So not really that happy. Then crushed for, like, six months. So I think I prefer being in the trenches... You can also have fun in the trenches. I mean, it's not great to be there, but, like, you can also do other things, like, other people, (laughs) for example. Do you know what I mean? I'm kidding, but I was thinking, why do relationships like that happen? And I could, you know, from both ends, like, why does anyone stay in that kind of relationship? And why do people create that kind of relationship? Because usually it's very one-sided. One person is more the problem than the other. I mean, you're both the problem if you're fucking staying in it, but, like, one person is, like, the one with the issues that are causing the problems. You know what I mean? So... What I was kind of thinking is, I was thinking when someone hurts you consistently in small-ish ways, like you have a fight and they say something foul that should never be said to another person, let alone your lover, during a relationship, or they intentionally pick fights or hurt you or, I don't know, do something, whatever it is, whatever the fuck it is that they know that's going to hurt you, and then you go back to them, that is how they view love. I think there is this huge thing around like love is like when you've struggled together, you've fought, you've got this like in-depth relationship because you've had all this like hardships to get there. It's like you've proved to each other that you love each other. Let me tell you that is fucking bullshit. It's not real. That is called the trauma bond, my friends. Love shouldn't be difficult. Love should not be painful. And it can feel very confusing because when you have gone through so much hardship with someone and it feels like you've fought for the relationship, like you've had, you've been, you know, down with each other, like you've had these horrible fights and you've come through and you've resolved it and then you've kissed each other goodnight and blah, blah, blah. It can feel like you've worked so hard on the relationship, blah, 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 blah. But like, actually, you sh- that shouldn't be there in the first place. You can work on a relationship without it being fucking miserable and painful and ugly. 
there's gonna be ugly bits to building any relationship. There's gonna be hard nights when you don't want to talk to each other, when you've had a fight, blah, blah, blah. But there is a difference, and I know that you can see the difference. I know that you know that this boy who is intentionally, like, fucking trying to trigger you and, like, calling you useless and stupid for, for, I don't know, whatever the fuck you did, leaving, like, losing something of his or whatever it is that you've done, that's, and then you fight, and he sees you cry, and, like, all this shit, like, if someone can do something to you and see you cry over it and do it more than once, they're done. <laughs> they're done for that. You really think it was an accident? You really think they didn't mean to? You really think... And even if they didn't mean to, they still knew better and they didn't have the ability to apply that knowledge to be better for you. They might not be an evil person. They might just be incapable. And a lot of people are incapable. Still shouldn't be with them. You still shouldn't be with them. You deserve someone who is at a point in their life where they're capable and you do not have to sit around and wait for some guy or some girl or some them to fucking be better or grow the fuck up or get over their trauma or fix their attachment style or take their fucking medicine like you don't have to wait you shouldn't have to it doesn't matter what excuse they have like they're still shit and here's the thing like a lot of times i will advocate for like waiting around for the people that you love and like waiting for them to be better and weathering hard times with people but not with the fucking guy you've been shagging for six months you're already trauma bonded with they think is like loki or soulmate they have like a connection with and it's like easy whether you're like comfortable with him like no I'm projecting. Okay, anyway. Anyway, yeah. Basically, my point was, like, a lot of people see, they believe love to be, like, how much you will do for them. Like, if they hurt you, if you have fights, if you have disagreements, if you have hard times and you keep going back to each other, that, for them, is the currency of love, right? And because that's how they see love, maybe that's how they received it from their parents, maybe they've never received it from anybody, maybe they've just got a fucked up brain for no reason. Some people are like that. That's how they see love. That is the currency that love is for them. How many times you will go back to them and choose them. Even if it's in spite of yourself, over yourself, you're choosing them. That's love to them. Nothing else you ever do will be love. Okay? If your love language is gifts, for example, and you love giving people gifts, not only does this person not have the emotional fucking intelligence to see that you love giving people gifts, and even if it's not their love language, they appreciate your gift so much because they understand that that's love from you, right? Not only will they never appreciate it from that intelligent point of view, they'll never appreciate it at all. You could shower them in gifts, you could shower them in affection, you could shower them in acts of service, they're not going to know any of that is love. They're just going to kind of expect it from you as like a fucking carer. And that, I believe, is why so many men view their partners as their mothers. So this is something that I wrote, okay? When you don't like the way someone behaves and your mindset is clearly healthier than theirs, it's, and it's not something that is acceptable to work on together, like they're having an issue that's not okay to work on together, like it's out of your fucking hands, because a lot of what people will struggle with is so out of your hands, right? Let me elaborate on that, actually, before I go on. I've never had an issue, like, that is not external, like, oh, I'm stressed about work, I'm stressed about exams, whatever, that can be helped by other people, other people can, like, help you along the road with that, but I've never had an issue where it's genuinely to do with me and something internal that anyone else could have had a fucking say in, like, people can give you external help, like, they can run you a bath at the end of the day, they can let you know that you're hurt and that you're loved and that your flaws don't make you unlovable, whatever the fuck it is, like, they can help you along the way, little things, but... Ultimately, it's only up to them to heal and to address the problem because not only can you not get inside their head and fix it for them, but you can't actually understand it because things are so extremely complex that it is only up to them. And as much as you might think that you can help them, you absolutely cannot. You know, if it's an issue where you cannot... Um, it's not acceptable for you to try and work on it together because it is just a them problem. It's okay to walk away and you don't have to fight and like chat shit about them and make it like a toxic, horrible breakup. You can still appreciate someone for their good qualities. Still love and respect them. <coughs> Excuse me. You can still love and respect them um, and have a lot of care for them. But in spite of that and including that, choose yourself and walk away. You do not have to be with someone. You don't have to hate them. You don't have to be with them either. Like, there is a, a medium to that. You can just leave. Also, like, when I say, like, oh, the whole, like, growing together thing, no, like, you don't have to know the difference between growing and a trauma bond. Like, let me say, like, it's so cool to, like, meet someone when you're, like, fucking down and out and, like, your life is shit and blah, blah, blah. And, like, 
you grow up together, you get rich together, you build a life together, you're struggling together, and then you come out into this great, like, amazing life. Like, that is one thing. But your bummy-ass fucking boyfriend that barely has a job and, like, picks his ass all fucking day and eats his bogeys, um, calling you a fucking bitch every time you have a fight and gaslighting the shit out of you is not growing with you like that's not growth and just because he like hugs you and says he's sorry and that he's gonna change at the end of it and gives you a million excuses about his fucking grandma dying it's not growth like that man is not helping you he doesn't care about you i literally wrote it here look What's not cool is fighting with claws and trying to get at each other, then forgiving each other and calling it growth. That's a trauma bomb, bitch. Thinking you've been through a lot with someone because you've both gotten through so many bad arguments and whatever is some weird illusion. And it's not necessary. It's not necessary! (laughs) It's not. To have a strong relationship where you're both so extremely, like, can't live without each other, you don't have to have had a million different fights. I've been in a couple different situations before where someone has had to hate me for their own sake. And let me tell you, I nearly went fucking crazy both times. The first time it happened, I actually pretty much did go crazy. The second time was, I was more recently, and I was just less affected by it because I was like, I'd actually been here before, and I just see through it now. But one time, I actually stood in the bathroom, and I swear to God, you know that feeling when you're about to throw up, and it's like, you don't have a choice, like, it's your body's about to do something you don't have control over? I felt like that, but with screaming. I was about to fucking scream, and I was so embarrassed because I was like, bitch, I'm actually in public right now like I was in a public bathroom and I was gonna fucking scream and I was like oh my god I can't I can't and I didn't know how to stop myself from literally just at like bloody murder like blood curling fucking screams but I didn't and I don't know how I didn't do it let me explain okay so sometimes people are so shit that they need to hate you and the first time that this happened to me was when I broke up with my ex and I did the classic thing okay it wasn't classic actually it was fucking genius I did the thing where you're like I don't actually think anything I do or say is going to affect this person because kind of what they did was make me feel like I had no worth to them right they'd gone off they'd fuck someone else they'd discarded of me it was a very typical like low-key narcissist situation where they you just get discarded and they're like fuck you I don't care about you anymore I'm on to the next and you're like oh my god what the fuck and I was like having a panic attack and I was like I don't know what to do so I confronted them about it I did confront them and then I never spoke to them ever again until like this year like very 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 recently I reached out to them and I was like it was a it was a whole situation but anyway I I disappeared I disappeared completely like when I blocked them I never unblocked them when I decided that I was gone from them I was gone from them because I knew the only thing I could really do to get under their skin like because they didn't care what I said because they were egotistical and they had all the power in the situation because they were the one that had hurt me and they fucking knew it they'd got out and cheated on me they knew it they knew they had the power and this is the thing if you've been cheated on they know they have the power you can sit there and scream and cry and say you fucking hate them and give them every insult under the sun, they still know that they're the one in the power because you're the one fucking crying. They might be crying too, but really, you're the one crying, and they know that, and you know that. So the best thing that you can do in that situation, the only thing that is going to hurt them, is to make them feel insignificant, and the only way you can do that is not to sit there and cry, cry and throw insults at them, because that's someone, that's the behaviour of someone that really, really cares. So what you're going to do in that situation is just completely leave. Like, act like it didn't even fucking hurt. You're like, all right, bye. Like, I'm not going to miss your presence in my life at all. And then you fucking leave. And that's exactly what I did. And let me tell you, it worked a charm. It worked a charm. So... I leave, I block them, I'm gone. And I even took a hiatus off social media. This is before I, like, posted, like, for anyone but, like, friends and family, you know what I mean? Like, this was years ago. And I took a... Uh, this was a afford to do it then obviously like done no almost fucking cared why i posted um and i didn't post for a couple months now the actual reason that i did this was because this person had not my confidence so bad that i didn't want to but it actually worked a charm because i wasn't like trying to make them think like oh look at me i'm having so much fun or like look at me i'm over you already because everyone knows that's bullshit and honestly it's embarrassing so i did the other thing where i just disappeared this person couldn't have any insight into my life they gave i gave them nothing i gave them no relief no release to be like Oh, well, they're doing this. Or, oh, well, they're doing chat shit about this now. Chat shit about that now. They had no reason to mention my name. Their friends had no reason to mention my name. Like, the conversations, I knew they were going to run dry eventually. What the fuck can you say about me? Because I'm gone. Like, I haven't posted. I haven't called you. I haven't unblocked you. There's nothing for you to say. There's You have nothing on me, bitch. Like, I'm gone. And, oh, my God, did that work. Like, this person 
with it took them three months and i remember in in this three months i was like is this bitch really never gonna fucking reach out to me like given i've blocked them on everything how would they but like there are things you can do you know what i mean like, if you're if you're gonna reach someone you're gonna reach someone you know what i mean like you can get through to she has my fucking address this person has my address i was like what the hell come on like times are ticking um so like three, nearly four months go by and I'm like, what the hell? I ended up moving to a new city. I was very gradually beginning to live my best life, but I was still, I was in like a, under like a fucking blanket of pain. I was in like, a, I was borderline grieving. I was distraught. I have spoken about this breakup so many times. I felt like my whole reality had shifted. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what the rules of the world were. I felt incredibly lost, incredibly lonely. And just, I was in so much pain. So I moved into this new city and this new house, like new vibes. And I remember one night I was listening to a song by fucking Kelly Clarkson. And it was, um, since you've been gone. No good. Anyway, um, I was listening to it like on repeat, like blaring it in my fucking room, probably through my headphones. And I remember I was like feeling this fucking song. Like I haven't felt a song like that in a long time. I don't even know if I felt anything like that since where I was like getting butterflies, I was like so excited, I was like fuck yeah, like I don't care about that bitch anymore, like I've got the rest of my life ahead of me, I know I can love people and I know I'm good and blah blah, like I was feeling myself again, I was like I know that I still have a lot of hurt ahead of me and I still have a lot of healing to do and I just started therapy, um, so I knew I had a lot of work ahead of me to like really recover from the emotional effects of this person, but I was like I am okay and I'm here and I've fuck this person I know I'm not in love with her anymore like I am over it I you you disgust me you repulse me you know what I mean I was so happy that night I felt like so much dopamine and serotonin literally flooding my body listening to this song bitch that night was the night I was like I genuinely think I'm done I think I am out of this relationship in my heart because even though they'd fucking dogged me like they had done me for filth I was still so like in love with them and just so like in my head about them and like just always thinking about them and like I couldn't hate them I couldn't find it in my heart to hate them I was just so hurt and so upset but I still like love them and I still wanted just to know if they were okay then this night I was like I am done with it I'm over it I'm you know when the breakup just hits and you're like fuck yeah so that exact night that Cle Kelly Clarkson night I put my phone away I go to bed do not disturb the whole night on silent right I wake up the next morning I shit you not 50 missed calls from her and I don't know why her phone was phone number wasn't blocked in my phone. Like I must have at some point unblocked her because I remember being like, "What if she's dying and needs me or something?" This bitch, I swear to God, these people know. These people, it's like when you stop caring, they get a little tingly sensation in their fucking spine. All their muscles start contracting, their bones start clicking, their backs break, and they're like, "I sense it." And then they fucking call you. What was my point? I have no idea what my point was there. Fun story time though. Anyway, the second time I was in a relationship that made... Oh, I remember. People who fucking hate you. Okay, the second time I was in a relationship or a situation ship, shall I say, where the person fucking hated me for no fucking reason. Like, just to make themselves feel better. But this other one was just like, over a period of time, like, they like, wormed their way into my fucking head and diminished my self-beliefs and diminished my very sweet and innocent and nice and happy way of thinking. And they like, killed me a little bit inside. So what they would fucking do was, and it just got worse and worse over time, right? It wasn't this bad at the start. What this person would fucking do was, I would say something like, I don't know, I like the colour purple. And they would be like, no you don't. And I'd be like, yeah, I do. That's like my favourite colour. They'd be like, no, it's not. Like, you've never said that. That's like a mild example, right? And I was like, maybe my colour's, like, maybe my favourite colour's, like, not purple. I don't know, like, that's crazy. Like, have I ever said that before? Like, did I just think that right now? I don't know. Right? And then it was things like I would look at another person and they would be like, you were checking them out. And I'd be like, no, I wasn't. And then they'd be like, yes, you are. See, you fucking lie. And you fucking gaslight me and this and that and this and that. And I'd be like, whoa that is crazy I remember one time and like it was I can't even remember I feel like I've blocked it out like I can't even give you a good example of the kind of thing that would be said and done and I would just be like 
you slowly make me doubt myself. It would make me feel crazy. I'd be like, do I, am I like an outcast of normal fucking society? Do I have no idea how to behave socially? Like, am I really, like, is there something seriously wrong with me? And then, like, I started to, like, genuinely believe I had autism because I was like, hold on, like, I must be misreading signals left, right, and center because any social interaction I would have, like, we would go out publicly together and then I would, like, be chatting to people and I'd be thinking, yeah, this is fine. Like, this person is responding to me very normally. We're having a very normal conversation conversation then I'd get back with you know my the person and they'd be like why the fuck were you talking like that to that person or like why did you say that that was a weird thing to say and I'd be like what like I didn't think that was a weird thing to say and it wasn't like it was just this person like hating me like having this weird like resentment and I never understood it I never ever got it until I realized some people are just like that and there's no reason and some people just need to fucking hate you with my ex they needed to hate me because they had seriously fucked up like they had fucked up to a point where your self-perception is going to be fucked like she had every reason to hate herself she was very valid in her hatred for herself but she had so much of it from what she had done to me that she couldn't fucking handle it because i i wouldn't be able to handle it either i would seriously fucking struggle to i think most people would and so he basically just flipped on me and was like you made me do this you're the evil one you know you made me feel depressed and now I'm gonna off myself and everyone's gonna have to feel sorry for me because look what I'm gonna do now and it was like I'm gonna upstage I'm gonna do something way bigger and way worse put the blame on you and then everyone's gonna feel sorry for me and hate you and that's exactly what they achieved and I was the only one to see through it at the time I don't know how people feel about it now nor do I give a fuck but it was kind of a similar thing with this other person where I was like, I think you just have this, like, you have such, like, a narrow, they had such, like, a narrow fucking view that, like, if I, the only way I could exist was to fit their view. God forbid I was my own person with my own feelings and thoughts and ways of seeing and doing things because, like, that's not possible. And so when I didn't, when I would do something that was sweet and innocent, like, if you do something in, that is in your mind really sweet and loving, but they, if they did that same thing, it wouldn't have the same intention. Like, say that you DM your, your childhood guy friend and you're like, hey, like, I miss you so much, blah, blah, blah. They would see that as, like, you're trying to fuck your childhood guy friend because that would be their situation. If they thought, oh, let me reach out to that girl I used to know, there would be sexual charge behind it because why else would they think to fucking do it? So why else would you think to fucking do it? Do you see what I mean? Like, some people are so fucking stupid, they can't see past their own frame of reference. And those people are very, very dangerous. For me, it was so frustrating because it was like I couldn't do anything right in either of those, with either of those two people. Like, any... Thing I did was a not good enough and b I would like get borderline fucking punished for it it was so fucked also it's very hard because when someone is like that and they can't see past their frame of reference and they're just projecting their intentions onto you and they don't have good intentions so that's even worse it's very hard because you could do something that you think is sweet or make a joke that you think is funny or just behave in a way that you think is good and and pure and they just won't see it like that and it means you can never predict their reaction i remember with this person i was always so nervous when we'd spend an extended period of time in public with each other and we would both interact with multiple people with both you know whatever you do socially and then it would be you know four or five hours and then we'd be back by ourselves I would get nervous like walking up to the house or walking up to you know wherever we were where we were going to be alone because I'd be like I don't know if they think I've done something wrong in my head I haven't but I might have done something they're not happy with and I'm gonna fucking get it now like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm done for and it got to this point where I was like I cannot if I continue respecting this person or caring for this person, I am going to lose my mind. And I was this one day that accused me of like lying for the 50 millionth time. The one thing about me is I'm not a fucking liar. I've told lies in my life like everybody else, some worse than others, but I do not lie about small things. It's it, it actually really pisses me off because I get accused of lying on TikTok all the time. And it's fine. I get it. A lot of my stories are extremely outlandish. They're all true. A couple times I'll get details wrong. And my mum will be like, oh, that's not what happened. This happened. And it's a very similar story, but it's like one little dumb thing is different. Sometimes I skew details so that a specific person won't know I'm speaking about them. So I'll say like, oh, it was my aunt's friend or like, 
I don't know, my cousin when it was actually like my ex best friend. Do you know what I mean? Like I'll change who it is in reference to me so that the person will be like, no, it wasn't me, which I'm now just blowing my cover by the way. Oh wells. <laughs> but like I don't lie about the plot line. And so I really, really hate, I even have an OCD thing against lying. I think that I deserve punishment and bad things if I lie. So I stay away from it where possible, right? Especially around important topics. And this person wouldn't shut the fuck up that I was a liar. And it would be like if I made a mistake, like say I put these AirPods in the back of the car and I'm convinced in my head that I took them inside, which I also have fucking ADHD. I get, th I fuck things up all the time. Say I thought I'd taken those AirPods inside with me and I said to them, where are my AirPods? Like I put them on the kitchen table and they would be like, uh, I don't know. And then we'd look for them and then, I don't know, we'd find out they were actually in the car. I would be a liar for that. Not, I wouldn't have made a human innocent mistake. I was a liar and I was in trouble for it. I swear it drove me up a fucking wall. And this one day I just went into the bathroom and I had no tears left really. Like towards the end I was just like, I used to cry all the fucking time. And then towards the end I was just like, I actually just don't have tears. And if I do, they're just frustration ones. I stood in the bathroom and I didn't think what they'd said had affected me. They'd called, they'd said I was gaslighting them and that, that, that I was a liar because I had done something so incredibly minute and it was clearly an innocent human mistake that I just thought I had done something and I hadn't done it. Like I thought I had completed a task I hadn't completed and I told them I had completed it. They had found out that I hadn't and I've been like, no, I did, I did do that. And they were like, no, you didn't. And I have proof, shown me the proof. And I've been like, that's weird. And to this day, I'm not entirely sure that I didn't do the task. I think that something then happened after, but anyway, 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 then they called me a gaslighter and a liar. And I went to the bathroom in this very public place and I stood there and I felt this rage boil inside me and I was like, I'm gonna scream and I can't even stop it coming out my mouth. Like I'm going to screech like a fucking hawk. And I literally had to do deep breathing to be like, I don't know what I'll do. Like people will come in here thinking I'm getting fucking stabbed in the face and then I'm gonna have to be like, no, I just got called a liar. <laughs> Sorry guys. The worst. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore because I'm literally just trauma dumping on you guys. Like this is the definition of fucking trauma dumping, but oh my God, oh my God. Some people will just fucking hate you and I don't know why. Like I, if you know why, let me know. I wish I had the advice. I wish this was more of an advice podcast. I guess it's not. From what I understand, it's like a projection of their fears onto you. And when someone can't, get past what it is they're feeling or a come and step outside their own brain and be like sometimes I do this really toxic thing where I project too much on other people and I, I think they're doing something I fear them doing or hate when people do but I accuse them of it wrongly and it's not fair and it's not right on my loved ones you know that's great if you can do that, I have to do that all the time with things. I have to step out of my own fucking selfish brain, my monkey fucking brain, and be like, look, this isn't worth getting that upset over. You're being irrational. You're overreacting. You know, this is an outsized reaction. Because I do this thing where I have this warped sense of justice. I don't know if any of you guys have this, but when someone does something wrong, I literally, th I'm like, burn them. Fucking stake them. Burn them. They deserve death. And it could literally be something quite minor, and I'll get over it in like a minute but I had this fucking weird sense of justice where I'm like, this person doesn't deserve to live. How could they do that? There's me having done fucking worse. And I'm like, well, I deserve to live because I have all these silly little excuses. And then someone else would do the same thing and I'd be like, I bet they have no excuses, kill them. So I need to get past that, but I do get past that. I get past that all the time because I'm like, I know that I have this weird little sense of justice that's gonna go away in three minutes when I get the fuck over myself. And like, I'm not gonna be that angry. And I, I don't really get angry. I just get very like worked up. Anger is not something I tend to venture into very often, but I do get very worked out. I get my knickers in a twist all the time. But when I do it, I'm like, let me just untwist these, because ouch. And like, it's not cute. Some people can't fucking do that. And listen, if you're more, look, look, be honest with your fucking self. If you're more emotionally developed than the person that you're spending most of your time with, what is that fucking doing for you? Anyway, I've just got like angry and I'm fuming now and I've not even given any advice. Just trauma dumped. Anyways, I think I'm done bitching and moaning. Uh, sorry that this, <laughs> that was no point to any of that. I just got angry. Anyway, I hate people that are emotionally underdeveloped. What the fuck are you? A cow? I don't, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, even if you think you have a strong mind, a strong head on you, 
people can get in it. And they, they nearly got in fucking mine. And they nearly drove me off the edge. And hey, I can't go crazy because now I have a fucking social media presence and that would be so embarrassing. It would be so embarrassing if I, if I, if I, ever, if I ever... Can I speak? If I ever fucking lost my mind again. I, I can't. Last time I shaved my head. And listen, more power to you if you've just shaved your head. Me personally, it brought out my ears a little bit too much. So we can't be going back to that because look how much these fuckers actually stick out. It's kind of a lot. Wow. So anyways, I'm going to go now. I've worked myself. I'm kind of excited because I got these. Li Actually, look how cool they are. Because they I, they gave them to me at the F1. Oh my god, I went to the F1. I went to Monaco. Did you guys see? Did you see the videos? It was so much fun. We went on a fucking super yacht. We went on two, actually. Actually, I don't know if one was just a yacht or one was um, a super yacht. One was definitely a super yacht. Mental. I've never seen anything like it. Also, I think I got over my fear of boats because did you guys know that I'm actually terrified of boats and I'm violently seasick, but I went on like five boats and I didn't get seasick once. There's, there's a vlog. Ah, I wasn't going to say anything. If you got this far into the video, then you know my new secret. There's a vlog coming of Monaco. Have I ever put anything out like that before? No, but there's a vlog coming. Four fucking cameras, just kidding, we had two. Why did I lie about that? Maybe I am crazy. No, I'm just kidding, we did have four cameras, but uh, two of them weren't anything to do with me. But we had two cameras shooting for the vlog, and, oh, no, three, actually, because I had my, f three, but yes, three, because I have I have some footage on my phone, some on this camera, and then some on another camera that we had with us, and I have to wait till I can get all those, like, memory cards and shit. I need to go take some deep breaths. <laughs> okay, love you so much, bye.